Why hello there, welcome back to my channel, nice to have you back here again. Of course if it's your first time checking out the show, you know what to do, smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. My word, hot news on the podcasting um, landscape of things, Joe Rogan might have lied, he lied, Joe Rogan lied to us, his audience, his hallowed fans, the people that worship him, buy everything that he puts out, are obsessed with kettlebells and jujitsu, he lied to us. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on who you believe. But according to a new post on Digital Music News regarding the position of Joe Rogan moving his show over to Spotify and claiming very early on, if you remember, that some of the shows that were missing were missing because of some sort of exporting, um, porting thing, some sort of thing concerning tech is the reason why most of the most controversial shows that appeared on the Joe Rogan experience were not transferred over to Spotify. But now we have a confession from the man himself that he lied. He lied to all of us. I'm not standing for it. So this is an article here from Digital Music News. It says Joe Rogan confirms that Spotify censored his earlier shows. There were a few episodes that didn't want on their platform. It goes as follows. For months, Joe Rogan fans were left wondering what happened to a number of earlier shows that went missing when the Spotify transition. Now we have the answer. The answer to the riddle came from Joe Rogan himself. He confessed this. What happens when you speak for hours and hours and on a podcast? Sometimes you forget you're being recorded, even though you know you're being recorded. But we continue. Um, he has now confirmed that Spotify simply refused to transfer a number of his earlier shows as a condition of their $100 million exclusive partnership. And Joe Rogan happily agreed to it. During the transition of Joe Rogan's podcast episodes onto the Spotify platform in 2020, fans quickly noticed that multiple past episodes were glaringly omitted. Those included interviews with controversial figures such as Milo Yiannopoulos, he did nothing wrong, Gavin McGuinness, absolute legend, Alex Jones, Eastern Rough President. Um, it continues here. Additionally, Joe Rogan issued a rare public apology and correction over the claim that he left left-wing anarchists had set fires in Oregon, a point that was made uh, during an interview with Douglas Murray. The information was wrong. The Rogan's mere corpo was highly unusual and believed to be a result of pressure from the activists of Spotify, star Spotify staffers. Now, we all, all owe an apology to some of the very diligent and eagle-eyed observers of Joe Rogan from Reddit, who pointed this out at the time. And at the time, I thought people were basically exaggerating. But they did point out at the time that it was very odd for Joe to come out and basically apologize for getting something wrong on his podcast, especially something that he just spoke about in passing because of something that he saw on Twitter. Usually it's just, you know, a conversation had between some friends. It's not that serious. He's a comedian. He always used that stick as a kind of, to kind of exonerate himself from talking about serious topics. But it was very odd that he'd come back and basically say, hey, I got that one wrong and do a weird public apology thing on his Instagram or that stuff. It just seemed a bit strange strange now it could be because at the time the political climate in the u.s was very tense right with everything that was going on with trump and stuff so maybe he thought that he was adding maybe too much fuel to the fire so he didn't want to be responsible for anything fair enough but it now that we've seen everything that's transpired since then it maybe does lend credence to the suggestion that the only reason why he did apologize and clarify exactly what that story was was due to his deal with spotify and the sensitivity around you know the reasons you know around maybe why they can maybe nullify it if you don't do certain things you know what I mean. It continues here. In a recent podcast discussion with comedian Fahim Anwar, Joe Rogan stated that Spotify is now completely hands off when it comes to his podcast, though that wasn't the case during the early days of the deal. But despite his frequent uh, declarations regarding free speech, Joe Rogan himself seemed happy to delete his earlier shows uh, to seal the deal. And if you remember correctly, in the beginning, he did moan. He was very careful about it. But I remember a couple of episodes, he did moan about certain people at Spotify suggest no so people as well suggesting guests but asking him what guests he had coming up and that's one thing that joe kind of refuses to do which is uh, something something i really respect him for and it's something to kind of look up to if you're kind of doing your own thing in terms of content wise he definitely kind of molds himself or tries to create a life for himself that will require him to explain himself the least amount of times throughout the process of his life that's what he basically wants us to be in a position where he does exactly what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it and he doesn't have to owe anybody an explanation or a reason for whatever he did when he goes on vacation he just disappears you don't hear back from him until he's back on the show again and if he wants to mention where he mentioned where he went he'll mention it if not he won't he's got that kind of understanding behind things so when he mentioned that certain figures at spotify were reaching out to ask about full upcoming guests he was like no i don't even do that for my to my fans i don't even let them know who's coming up so i'm not going to tell you guys so there was, there was definitely some tension in the beginning but you can definitely understand if you're spotify and you paid 100 million dollars for this guy's podcast to license it to they haven't bought the rights out fully you're definitely going to have some requests right 
continues. Ironically, the topic of Spotify came up in the context of corporate censorship, specifically Netflix uh, censorship of an episode of Hassan Minaj's Patriot Act, which should have been completely taken off air because it was probably one of the worst shows I've ever seen in the history of the world. But hey, if you're living in Hollywood, you probably think it was amazing. Um, following pressure from the Saudi Arabian government, when I saw that Hassan's show was pulled because of the criticism of Saudi um, Arabia, I was like, what, Netflix? It made me like, man, I don't know if that's the place. I don't know if that's the place anymore because I feel like there's too much corporate involvement. There's too much influence on content. Imagine the lack of it. I don't mind hypocrisy, right? Um, the legend hypocrisy himself, Andrew Schultz, always says, right? Hypocrisy is actually a tool that you can use to armor yourself with, right? It's really funny when people come out and just kind of declare their own hypocrisy. But when you pretend you don't have any, that's when it gets a bit annoying. It continues. Anytime anything gets big enough, you're going to get shit like that. And while said, there's going to be things, strings attached. And he said, yeah, that's criticism of me being on Spotify, Rogan quipped uh, while letting out a laugh. Which raised the question of whether Spotify actively censors Rogan's editorial freedom. He says, they don't give a fuck, man. They haven't given me a hard time at all, Rogan stated, before spilling the beans on censorship bit. He said, there was a few episodes they didn't want on the platform. And I was like, like, okay, I don't care. And But other than that, in terms of what I do in the future, the big test was having Alex Jones on. So that answers the question, though Rogan insisted that there won't be a further corporate oversight moving forward. A lot of people are like, they're telling Joe Rogan what can, can do, they're not they're not so now we have the answer now we know that joe rogan's show was censored and all the things that we were saying prior as fans in forums on youtube comments or those still around were not without merit and it makes sense to be completely honest right if somebody offered you a hundred million dollar deal i would understand why you would maybe buck and decide to kind of go back on some of the things that you said in terms of sponsorship because a hundred million dollars is a hundred million dollars um anyone that's been paid a lot or you've received like a tax rebate or whatever money in your account and you see the numbers suddenly spike up out of nowhere it does something to you it changes your whole idea about how you budget about what you're going to spend your money on where you're going to go it completely changes so i don't even want to imagine how my brain and everything around it would completely change if i saw all those zeros added to my bank balance at the moment it would be absolutely incredible but still if you're joe rogan a question does need to be asked prior to spotify it was alleged it was rumored that joe was making anywhere between the region of 30 to 60 million dollars per year from his podcast alone doesn't include what he doesn't stand up or anything just from podcast that's what allegedly was the figure that was thrown out there even if it's 10 million per year is it really that life-changing to sign a hundred million dollar contract when you know you've got a podcast that you can basically do until you're dead right because it doesn't require any sort of like athletic ability or you know whatever it may be right you're just sitting in a chair talking for hours on end it's something that you can do forever and ever was there really a reason uh, or a desire what was the real desire outside of obviously the immediate monetary gain to sign that spotify deal and was it really worth it if it meant that you'd have to censor your show and it'll prevent you from maybe having the possibility to put your friends on the platform again look at chris D'Elia and brian callan i'm sure they could have used the joe rogan co-sign when they were going through what they were going through but unfortunately because of his alignment with spotify and the amount of brand deals and uh, ads that he has at the beginning and the end of his podcast or whatever it may be or sometimes down in the middle if you listen via the spotify app it really messed that whole thing up so it's definitely a question that needs to be added on there as for the shows themselves that are missing from the actual platform i don't know if anybody's actually going to be missing them and thinking oh my god i want to really really listen to chris D'Elia on there alex jones owen benjamin to be fair those are really two good ones um, Owen benjamin is an absolute psycho but it's a good podcast to listen to chris D'Elia again sargon of a cad gavin mcginnis alex jones eddie bravo manionopolis kip anderson i don't know who that is charles c johnson all the all the people that you would assume that would would have kind of um oh David Asprey is that the guy that does bulletproof coffee I wonder why they'd have a problem with him before well what did he do that was controversial they got a couple Joey Diaz is one I'm sure that was the one where Joey Diaz mentioned something about jumping in some woman's um window right and licking her out was that the one <laughs> mad guy you got love uncle joey uh pete Hansen. you know there, there, there's a few on there but i'm sure they're not going to lose any sleep over some of them that have gone missing is it disappointing yes maybe you know joe rogan was the bastion of you know fighting against censorship but sometimes unfortunately money does sometimes do the talking and at this stage of joe rogan's life he has a few money but if he actually wants to cement the legacy of his family for generations to come taking a hundred million dollar deal is definitely going to take some um, stress off of his shoulders so it makes complete sense but let me know what you think in the comments